What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.1.1 to the general public. Now along with this release, Apple did also push out updates for iPadOS 17.1.1, watchOS 10.1.1, macOS 14.1.1, macOS 13.6.2, and HomePod version 17.1.1. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see it comes in at just under 400 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro. That size will vary depending on your device and the version you are coming from, but that was coming from version 17.1. So let's check out the new build number in our settings. The new build number is 21B91. And if we head back to check out the modem firmware, that is 1.12.02 for the iPhone 15 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.1.1? Now, if you guys have been following software updates in my channel for a while, you know that when there is a double point update, like a 0.1.1, that means it is going to be specific to fixing bugs and just addressing security issues. You're not going to see any new features in these double point updates. So you probably already braced yourself for not much new, but we do have a couple of fixes to talk about, not just for iOS, but also for watchOS and the HomePod, which we'll talk about in a moment. But the first thing that has been addressed here in iOS 17.1.1, along with iPadOS 17.1.1 is a fix for the lock screen widget, specifically if you had snow showing as the conditions. You would see this really weird look on your lock screen if you had snow in your area. So that has been addressed and now it shows the snow icon properly. But more importantly, we have a bug for a pretty major issue relating to BMW and Toyota Supra cars. So this is a fix for the wireless charging bug. So basically if you had an iPhone 15 series and you wirelessly charged, your NFC chip would become disabled, causing you to not be able to use Apple Pay or anything in the wallet application that relies on NFC. And this could not be fixed without restoring your phone, or in some cases, you had to get a whole new phone just from simply charging your phone on the wireless charging pad in a BMW or Toyota Supra. But that has finally been addressed here with iOS 17.1.1. Now, I did also want to quickly address the watchable 10.1.1 update as well which just came out today and this fixes the battery drain issue so if you had any battery drain issues on any apple watch on watch os 10 or 10.1 that has been addressed so apple says this update provides important bug fixes and addresses an issue that could cause the battery to drain more quickly for some users and then we also have a bug fix update for the home pod with version 17.1.1 so as you can see all of my home pods were updating right here and this addresses addresses an issue where some HomePod speakers could respond slowly or fail to complete requests. So it says some speakers, but pretty much all of my HomePods on 17.1 were completely useless because they did not you know, respond to any of the queries that I asked. So hopefully 17.1.1 does address this issue. It's good to see this update get pushed out for the HomePods. So if you had that issue, make sure to go into the Home app and update your HomePods. Now what's interesting is that Apple did not publish any CVEs in terms of security patches for the 17.1.1 update or any of the other updates, including macOS. So, you know, this is just specifically a bug fix update. It doesn't look like there are any security vulnerabilities that needed patching just yet from 17.1. So I'm sure we'll likely see plenty of bug fixes and you know security patches in 17.2 when that releases. Now, as far as the performance and the battery life goes, I am going to run a quick Geekbench 6 test just to see if there's any difference in scores from 17.1, but I would not expect any type of major difference in performance or battery life on the iPhone. Now on the watch, on watchOS 10.1.1, you should see battery life increase, but for all the other updates, don't expect any change Changes to the performance or the battery life. All right, so we scored a 2917 on the single core and a 7223 on the multi core. So slightly lower than 17.1 scores, but don't put too much stock into these benchmark tests. They don't really tell you everything. So again, I would not expect any major difference in performance from 17.1. Now, I do also want to address a question that I get asked every single time I publish one of these videos, even the small ones, and that is should you update or not? And I would say that pretty much for all users, you may as well go ahead and update, especially if you're on iOS 17 already. There's really no reason not to update. These double point updates hardly ever impact, you know, anything negatively. They never really introduce new bugs 
or new battery drain issues, those are usually the single point updates. So if you're on 17.1, I don't really see any reason not to update to 17.1.1, even if you are not facing any of the issues that we talked about throughout this video. Now, also keep in mind, if you were having the watchOS bug, like with your battery drain, or if your battery is just not performing very well on watchOS 10.1, and you want to update your watch, but not your iPhone, you might run into issues there. Apple has had a history, you know, in the past, if you have mismatched you know, software numbers on your watch and your iPhone, you might run into issues. So if you're gonna update your watch, you may as well update your iPhone as well and vice versa. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So this is the double point update that I expected in November. I talked about this over the past couple of weeks. So now I wouldn't really expect any other software updates throughout November, at least for the public. We will be seeing betas for iOS 17.2. We will see those continue throughout the month, but I would not expect the next public release to come until December, and that will most likely be 17.2. So I would expect to see iOS 17.2 at some point in early December. Now there is a slim possibility that we see a 17.1.2, but really the only way that's gonna happen is if Apple finds other bugs, like the ones that we had fixed in this update, other issues like that, or maybe some security vulnerabilities that were being actively exploited. But if we don't see any of those, Apple's most likely just going to hold off on updating us until 17.2 at some point in early December. And of course, if you've not been following following iOS 17.2 beta updates, which I do post here on my channel. That is the update that includes the journal application. So I've seen a lot of people talking about how they don't have the journal app and you know how they might see it in 17.1.1. No, the journal app is in 17.2. So you will see that everybody will get access to the journal app when 17.2 launches. Now, I did also want to touch on the macOS updates because we did receive macOS Ventura 13.6.2 and macOS Sonoma 14.1.1. Now, we have different build numbers for the M3 MacBook Pros for both macOS 13.6.2 and 14.1.1. So the Ventura update 13.6.2 is specific to just the M3 MacBook Pro because this finally adds support for you know this machine and it also allows you to update to mac os sonoma so there was a big bug that i faced myself i posted about this over on x where i was not able to update to mac os sonoma but now with this update it will you know be registered in the system and it's going to allow you to update to mac os sonoma over the air without having to manually do it and then we did also receive mac os sonoma 14.1.1 and once again we have a different build number for the new m3 m3 pro and M3 Max chips, the MacBook Pros have a different build number versus all of the other Macs that got the update for 14.1.1. Now, Apple doesn't give any specific details on why this was pushed out. They just say that it provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. Now, Apple did not publish any CVEs, any type of security notes, so I'm not sure what security updates they are talking about, but it is advised to install for all devices. So anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 17.1.1. A very minor update that is available now for all devices along with the updates to the mac the home pod and the apple watch so i hope you guys enjoyed this short video if you did i would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future software update videos just like this one but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon